Okay, so today we talk about another obstetric emergency, which is um, eclampsia. Eclampsia is a common condition in our labor world, and that's why we talk about it today. Definition of eclampsia is convulsions or coma in a preeclamptic patient, and the convulsions or coma have no alternative explanation. So when we have that, we make a diagnosis of eclampsia. So once we make a diagnosis of eclampsia, we call for help. We call all the experienced people that are on labor ward to come and help with the management of the patient. Uh, we secure the airway of the patient. Uh, this patient might have bitten their tongue. The tongue is swollen. They're not breathing well. Make sure we put um, their neck in a position that makes it easier for them to breathe. Uh, if possible, we need to make sure that we put them in a recovery position. Um, we make sure that um, they have IV lines uh, that we are going to use um, to manage them. Um, and then, yeah, we get bloods. We get our bloods for full blood count, U1Ds, LFTs. Um, we catheterize the patient, check the protein, uh, measure the urine output, just get um, into their general condition. We measure all the vitals. Um, then the next thing we need to be aware of is just make sure you secure uh, the bed where the patient is sleeping. The bed um, must be one with rail so that the patient doesn't fall off and injure themselves. We remove all the things that can injure the patient from the surrounding of the patient in case of a convulsions. Um, yeah, if we don't have a bed with rails, better we put the patients on a mattress on the floor. So once we have these preliminaries done, we give magnesium sulfate um, to stop the convulsions we, and to also prevent future convulsions. So the usual 14 grams loading dose. We give 4 grams IV, 20%. We give um, 10 grams IM. 50% uh, and we continue with the maintenance dose. We continue with the maintenance dose 24 hours after the last convulsions or uh, 24 hours after uh, delivery, whichever occurs later. We need to record all the fits that the patient is having on a fit chart. If a patient fits after the loading dose of um, magnesium sulfate and um, we need to give another loading dose. As long as this uh, this convulsion has happened at least 30 minutes after the loading dose. So we give two grams IV, 20%, and um, then we continue or restart uh, the maintenance dose from that point where the recurrent uh, convulsion has occurred. And if the patient continues to fit um, despite having had um, repeat magnesium sulfate doses, usually we consult um, an anesthesiologist. We talk to the consultant, and usually the patient goes to theater. Uh, they give, they sedate the patient into bed, um, and put the patient usually on thiopenton uh, until. The convulsions are controlled. This is usually done in ICU in our setup. So that's about um, controlling convulsions. Second thing we need to do is, of course, control the blood pressure. Uh, blood pressure that is above 160 over 110 makes um, the patient at high risk of stroke. So you want that blood pressure to be low, lower than that, but you don't want to reduce it rapidly. If you reduce it rapidly, uh, it re it uh, compromises uh, fetal placental perfusion and uh, can cause fetal death. So you want that blood pressure reduced slowly over, you know, four to six hours other than uh, a rapid decrease of blood pressure in two hours or one hour. You have a low blood pressure. You end up with a fetal death. Um, the other thing that... Um, we need to say about blood pressure is that the common drugs we are using to control blood pressure in our labor ward is methyl dopa, of course, uh, nifedipine, and we are using hydralazine. These are the drugs that uh, we need to be conversant about. Uh, we can talk about it in another time, but these are the drugs we are normally using to control blood pressure. And then 
once the blood pressure is around 135, 85, you know, anything below 140, 90 um, is good enough as long as we don't reduce these blood pressures too rapidly. So that's about blood pressure control. The other thing that we need to do is that uh, we need to secure uh, the life of the um, uh, fetus. We need to put this woman on CTG to monitor um, fetal well-being. Uh, the other thing is that we need to uh, put this woman um, uh, we need to put this woman on uh, dexamethasone. The idea is that um, we are going to um, give the woman dexamethasone, especially if the, uh, in those cases where the pregnancy is below uh, 35 weeks. So we give dexamethasone and we are trying to secure um, uh, fetal lung maturation. So we want to reduce the risk of res uh, respiratory distress syndrome and we know dexamethasone has other benefits. It reduces the risk of... Um, um, intraventricular hemorrhage, it reduces the risk of enter necrotizing enterocolitis, or this reduces the risk of death within 24 hours in NICU, and it reduces admissions to NICU. So uh, dexamethasone has all those benefits. So we have to give um, uh, dexamethasone to secure uh, the life of the fetus. And then uh, the last part, we know that um, the definitive management of eclampsia is uh, delivery of the woman. And we must say that caesarean section is not the first choice for a woman who's um, eclamptic. This is a very sick patient. If they go to um, theater, they have all these uh, things going on in their physiology. They have a coagulopathy, they have laryngoedema, uh, they have high blood pressure. Uh, they have liver dysfunction, so if they go to theater, they get anesthetic drugs, they might um, get worse. Uh, they get a spinal and they have a low platelets, they might have bleeding in the subarachnoid space and so on and so forth. So we don't want these women to go for caesarean section. We want them to go for caesarean section only if vaginal delivery is contraindicated or if there's another uh, labor complication that is... Um, uh, kind of forcing us to do a, a caesarean section. So we need to induce these women unless contraindication for induction and get them to, to be delivered. The time limit for deliveries are usually put at 12 to 24 hours. It's put at 12 to 24 hours because we want to stabilize this um, patient before we deliver. So we'll be delivering this woman between 12 and 24 hours after, should be delivered 12 to 24 hours after admission because we want to stabilize her. So what does stabilization mean? It means that you know her airway is um, secured, she's breathing properly, her oxygen saturation is within normal. Um, we know that um, her coagulopathy, if she has one, has been uh, uh, corrected. We know that her blood pressure is normal and um, we know that her conscious level uh, is also normal. She can talk to us. Her Glasgow coma scale is not um, in a place where we cannot communicate. So we want to get out of to get her out of that um, situation before uh, we can deliver her. So once we stabilize, maybe we have six or eight hours to try and stabilize her, four to six hours, somewhere there, depending on the condition of the patient. Uh, once we say that she's stable, then uh, we can start uh, the induction of labor. If induction of labor is contraindicated, then after she's stabilized, yeah, usually you have to inform an anesthetist of the condition of the patient, and then the patient will eventually go for, um, uh, for caesarean section. So those are um, uh, the general principles that get us to the point um, where we deliver the patient. After the patient is delivered, of course, we need to continue monitoring because this patient is on magnesium sulfate. We need to continue monitoring the blood pressure. We need to continue monitoring the urine output. We need to continue monitoring the respiratory rate, including the um, 
that oxygen saturation on the pulse oximeter. We need to continue monitoring the patella reflexes, which are the first sign of uh, magnesium uh, toxicity that we can monitor in our setup. So we need to continue monitoring those things. Uh, this woman is catheterized. Of course, you are monitoring uh, the urine output and so on and so forth. You have all your labs already taken. So once she's um, delivered, we normally would keep these women for 24 hours in a special observation unit or high dependence unit after delivery so that they don't go to the normal postnatal ward before that. Um, the monitoring of the labor is, is um, yeah, just close monitoring because uh, the fetus and the placenta is compromised, the fetus might be compromised, so we need to uh, monitor the labor um, closely. And yeah, once she finishes magnesium sulfate, she's been in uh, the, um, this special observation unit for 24 hours after delivery, then we can send the woman to postnatal hours for routine observations and so on and so forth. So that was um, our tutorial on um, management of a common obstetric emergency, um, eclampsia. So see you in the next one.